There's certainly plenty of fans that were waiting for Becky Lynch to return. You know, Seth Rollins appears, they're chanting for Becky Lynch. So we knew it was not a matter of if, but when and how soon. And a lot of us were looking towards SummerSlam and saying that might be where she would potentially come back, which is most certainly what inevitably happened. And yeah, it wasn't good. It was bad. It was really bad. I don't know how else to sugarcoat it. No point in sugarcoating it. It was just bad. Now, you know, it's important to take a deeper dive into this because this Becky Lynch return, you look at this and you have to understand that there were a combination of key factors here for WWE. You're going into your biggest show of the summer, your WrestleMania of the summer. You have to hit it big. You're going to have ended up with 50,000 plus fans there at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. You know, you have to do something that feels like a big show. You have to do something that justifies doing a stadium show for an event that isn't WrestleMania. And as a result, that's going to put the pressure on you to want to put forth the best effort you possibly can. This isn't just Raw or SmackDown where you can act like you don't give a shit. Like here, you're charging fans big ticket prices. You're trying to fill up as much of a stadium as you can relative to the current environment that we're all dealing with. Like you, you have to go above and beyond here. You absolutely do. And then you factor in what AEW has been doing recently and CM Punk's signing and ultimate debut on AEW Rampage on Friday night, just the night before SummerSlam. Like the WWE does have to do something to take a little bit of that attention away. They absolutely do. You've also got the NFL season starting in a couple of weeks. You're going to have to give the fans reasons to care, to want to tune in to your product. Certainly, when you're thinking about and talking about Monday Night Raw, not even to a lesser degree talking about SmackDown, but just in general. As some of these other sports, the NFL starts coming back, and then you got the NBA coming back, you know, in October. You gotta give the fans reasons to care. So you have to do big things with this SummerSlam show. And frankly, the WWE's in a position now, we all know this, we all understand this, acknowledge this, accept this, that they need any type of star power they could possibly get on either of their shows. Doesn't matter at this point. Certainly, especially in Raw, but SmackDown too. Like, they need star power. They're severely lacking in that category on both shows. Hence why they're bringing in a Goldberg to face a Bobby Lashley. Hence why they're bringing in a John Cena to face off against a Roman Reigns. Because their roster ain't got it in terms of the star power. And nor does the Titan Tower machine know how to make big stars anymore. So they need whatever they can get. And especially when you talk about Sasha Banks, you know, being out for one of your marquee matches with relatively small notice. I mean, you had, it sounds like, at least a week here that you knew this was a possibility, a potential. But still, you know, obviously you were building up very much towards John Cena and Roman Reigns for the Universal title. Everybody knew that that was going to main event. But your second marquee match... You could say it was Seth Rollins and Edge, certainly, but probably number three. Again, another SmackDown match. I think you had more buzz and excitement about the rematch between Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair, tying into what happened at WrestleMania. Now here's a chance for Sasha back, Banks to potentially come back, get her revenge, or for Bianca to stamp her superiority on the SmackDown women's division. You know, you weren't going to have Sasha Banks there. So this was something you had invested energy and time into building towards, that's a, that's a shitty situation. Nobody wants to have to deal with that. That sucks. Like, to be clear, that sucks. So, it doesn't surprise me that they decided, hey, whether it's really right or whether it's re she's really ready or not, we're going to have Becky Lynch return at SummerSlam. You have to do it. Like, you absolutely have to do it. The problem is, you didn't have to do it in the damn way that you did do it. There were so many other options of what you could have actually done. First of all, how about no false advertisement? You shouldn't have to have Raj Geary from Wrestling Inc. and other sites confirming that Sasha Banks is indeed not going to wrestle at SummerSlam. You should be transparent enough to tell your fans ahead of time that she's not going to be able to show up. 
you basically ran with it all week, knowing this, this was a possibility, likelihood, inevitability, and yet still acted like this was a thing and this was what was going to fucking happen. Like, that's crappy. That's disrespectful to your fans. Card subject to change my ass. The card had changed. You know goddamn good and well WWE it had, and yet you sat there and did nothing but spin and lie your fan, to your fans about this. You may have had fans who specifically went to this event just to see Sasha versus Bianca, and now they feel like they were ripped off. They feel like they were lied to. You can only do that but so many times with your paying customers, your audience, your fans, your customers. That's stupid. But even beyond all of that, the don't do the false advertisement bullshit, you could have had Bianca squash Carmella, and then Becky Lynch come out to challenge her afterwards, have a face-off. That would have accomplished the goal. Because people would have been really pissed at Carmella and then you hear Becky Lynch's music and she comes out. The pop would have been equivalent to what you fucking actually got. Maybe even been slightly bigger. You could have had Carmella and Zelina attack Bianca again. And this time Becky Lynch comes out and makes the save. What would have been so fundamentally wrong with that? Like you had probably a week here to plan this out. Know this was going to happen. You had so many other options to do other than what the hell you ended up doing. You could have went into SmackDown on Friday night and said, hey, unfortunately, Sasha Banks isn't going to be able to compete. People have certainly understood. Like we've seen this happen before, might see it happen again. Why not announce that you're going to do a number one contenders battle royal or some type of gauntlet match or something? Find a new opponent for Bianca by having them win at SmackDown and then they got to take on Bianca at SummerSlam on Saturday night. What, what's so hard about that? Have that number one contender face Bianca, lose, and then Becky Lynch returns again. You're still getting Bianca Belair defending her title at SummerSlam, and then you're still getting the moment with Becky Lynch. Or even more so, how about you don't even go there. How about you have Becky Lynch confront Charlotte Flair after she got back the Raw Women's title? Talk about a show that damn needs some life in it. Why not throw Becky Lynch at Charlotte at this point? I'm just throwing that out there. You could have had Becky and Bianca just scrap. No clear-cut winner. Fuck a match, or even if you did the match, have there be no clear or decisive winner. Just have it be two alpha females trying to establish dominance, and they both beat the hell out of each other. You could say, well, maybe Becky's not in ring shape. She doesn't have to be in great ring shape to pull off a... Finish like that. You could have done so many things that would have still kept Bianca looking really good and got fans really pumped up and excited for Becky Lynch's return. And instead, you did this horrible, dumb, dick, terrible shit. Now, I know here's the Becky Lynch stands. Gonna come on here and be crazy. Get a grip on reality and life. Get a clue. Because the reality is, they took a marquee, main event worthy match for this iteration of WWE, this company at this time, that absolutely is a main event worthy pay-per-view match, and they blew it in under 30 seconds! That's stupid! You went with a match when it just wasn't necessary. If you don't have to do it, then fucking don't! And if Becky Lynch wasn't ready to work a full match, maybe she was, maybe she wasn't, but based off of what the fuck they did, certainly seems like she wasn't, then don't do one at all! Why blow your wad when it's not time? Why sit there and bust one when you don't need to? Pull out! It's not that hard. And all the while, all you did was you took all the shine and focus away from the positive vibes of Becky Lynch's return and instead, in a couple of minutes, had everybody flip, turn, twisted the other way talking about how Bianca Belair got co You idiots! And then, you're going to have those idiots that will sit there and talk about, well, you have this happen sometimes. Ultimate Warrior did it to Honky Tonk Man at SummerSlam 88. Vastly different circumstances and situation. Honky Tonk was the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion. He was a fucking heel. The Ultimate Warrior was a young, powerhouse, up-and-coming babyface. Makes sense to squash the heel like that. 
Especially with the surprise and it being the fucking Ultimate Warrior. This reek to some bullshit at WrestleMania 9. Bret Hart loses to Yoko, but here comes Hulk Hogan to save the fucking day. It was lame as shit. It was horrible. You don't squash a top babyface champion like this. That's just stupid. If Becky Lynch was a babyface and Bianca was a heel, and you were presenting Bianca as a heel, you were featuring her as a heel, you were giving the crowd and fans legitimate reasons to hate her, then this could absolutely work. But you dumb dicks bring back Becky Lynch like she's supposed to be the babyface, and this giant side of John China, you do this bullshit that makes her instantly not as likable. And even if you're going in a different direction with Becky Lynch, the reality is, is right now a lot of these fans that were dying for her to come back, they don't want to fucking boo her. They don't want to hate her. So why go against the grain? It's like Vince McMahon giveth and he taketh away. You wanted Becky Lynch? It's gonna cost you. That's such good shit. And then you gotta be sensitive to this for WWE. Like, there's gotta be somebody in that company to sit Vince, Hunter, Stephanie, others down and say, you've got to realize this is not going to be a good look. The optics are terrible here. You basically sat there and have this situation where you're reminding fans certainly some white ones, but plenty of black fans, of how you've treated your black male and black female superstars over the years. There's like this little bit of a history that somebody white has to be one of the black female champions every year at SummerSlam. It didn't happen with Naomi and Natalya and Sasha lose before, and now you've got Bianca getting squashed, not just getting beaten by Becky Lynch in some 10 or 15 minute match, but getting squashed in under 30 seconds. You basically white knighted with Becky Lynch and had her squash Bianca. It's horrible. It makes Bianca look like shit and it puts Becky Lynch in a dumb and unfair situation. You have to understand whether it was your intention or not, how poorly this is going to be perceived. You have to understand how badly this is going to come across. And by the way, when you've got Kofi trending because people are saying Bianca got Kofi, that's not a good thing. And in a company, in a place and a time where you're still talking about when a black male superstar or a black female superstar does something, it could still be a first. That is indicative of a long problematic history of the WWE specifically when it comes to how they've treated their black wrestlers slash superstars over the years. You can't do this shit. It's dumb. Now in a bubble, is this decision racist? No the way it would be perceived or can come across, certainly can come across that way. And the perception in this case is going to be the reality. You basically trashed your year-long build of Bianca Belair for someone who hasn't been around in over a year and ding-dong dumb dicks didn't exactly move the fucking needle when she was there. No matter how much you try to prop her up or force her. Now, I remember going to a house show up at DC at the Capital One Arena when it was two-thirds empty and she was advertised for main event billing. Not good. And you, again, reminded people of what it's like for somebody to get kofi That's not good. Let's stop pretending like Becky is this big, massive star that merited this. She's not. Who knows what Bianca could be if she got the level of treatment and push and force that a Becky Lynch got fucking behind her. But beyond all of that, you've now overloaded the SmackDown women's roster to where well, you assume Sasha is going to come back quickly. I know this company on the one hand cares about Sasha, but then on the other hand, when it really matters, truly fucking doesn't. But now you're going to have her come back. So now you're going with some triple threat dynamic. Like who the fuck wants to see that? Meanwhile, you've got this raw women's roster that's just flailing with an overrated ass, overforced, overpushed fucking heel champion in Charlotte Flair. You could have sent Becky Lynch right at her and at least given Raw something, but now you went too top heavy with SmackDown. That's fucking stupid. What are you going to do when Sasha's back from whatever it was? Was it COVID or something else? I don't even fucking know. 
You took what should have been a real feel-good moment for a lot of fans and pissed them off. That's a special kind of skill of stupid to be able to do that. You have a number of fans, understandably so, with the perception that this company still, when in doubt, is always going to pull the trigger to make sure they screw over a black wrestler in order to make a white wrestler look better. Whether that was the motive here or not doesn't matter at the end of the day because that's the perception and the perception becomes a reality. And when it comes to WWE, when it comes to their history, they really don't have a fucking leg to stand on here. You have to be smart enough to understand the optics and how this is going to come across. And if we were talking about 20 or 25 years ago in the business, then maybe it doesn't fucking matter. But the reality is with everything that you do as a company, a publicly traded entity and everything else, you want to play the corporate game, then sometimes you have to play the corporate game, which means sometimes you overanalyze and overthink this shit and you don't put yourself in situations where you can come across looking really poorly in unintended ways and consequences. You got more people pissed off now thinking about the racist and concerning past of the WWE when it comes to treating how they're male and female black superstars. You got people talking about how Bianca was buried and in and of itself in this one moment, does it bury Bianca Belair? No. Do you really have faith in the company to sit there and immediately write course correct and change this to make it come out good? If you do, what the hell are you smoking? Pass me some of that, Jack. They deserve zero of your benefit of the doubt. You got fans talking about how she got Kofi'd. You took this great feel good moment and you shit the bed with it. On the bluest of blue fucks were you thinking? This Becky Lynch return was terrible. Not because I'm saying Becky Lynch is terrible or that they didn't need her. Like I said, they need everybody they can get at this point. Becky Lynch is somebody they invested a tremendous amount of time, energy, effort, resources, money into. So you want to be able to bring her back. A Becky Lynch versus Bianca feud could be money. A Becky Lynch versus Bianca match for the SmackDown Women's Championship is main event worthy. But think about how much better it would be if you didn't already have Becky Lynn squash her in like 26 damn seconds. God, this was so stupid. It's like the WWE under old Vince McMahon intentionally sets out through his senility, through his levels of pettiness to give themselves the path of not least resistance, but most resistance. The hell are you doing that for? Just mind numbing how dumb this company can be sometimes. The stage was set to have a real SummerSlam moment. And you created one. But it wasn't anything to be proud of, that's for damn sure.